Hello guys, so in today's video we are going to take a deep, deep, deep look inside the hook technique. Now we are going to take a look on the main fundamentals, ways on how to execute it, the styles of executing it, 3 to 4 mini workouts, a few tips, one key factor in in the setup and another tricks so let's talk about what is the hook technique so we know that the top roll is about opening up the hand and wrist of the opponent and pinning him with the least resistance top line. Now the hook is mostly about arm power, getting the match inside, the committing the shoulder, getting in a great position to press and all those kinds of things. Now the main key fundamentals come closer for the hook is wrist flexion and internal rotation, shoulder internal rotation. If you got this too, you're going to be great at hooking. You can also drop a little bit of supination, a ton of things. You can also drag all sorts of things. Now, these were the fundamentals, main fundamentals, because We've got bicep strength, we've got full spination or the deep hook, we've got dragging and side pressure and all those kinds of things. Now, the keys or not keys, the ways to execute it, there are many variations. The most dominant one is the one where you are on top and it's called the high hook where you maintain your pronation, you open the fingers, you attack and keep the wrist straight of the opponent and you are kind of posting but you're still in a hook match because the opponent is pushing with his hand on your wrist. This is the most efficient position, he will burn a lot faster but I don't think that many guys can do it mm -hmm. tremendous formation strength and back pressure also there are there is the deep hook where you drop all your pronation and attack there's a semi deep hook where you are kind of 45 degree supinated there's also the offensive one where you are trying to maintain as much pronation as possible there is also the one with the shoulder committed at a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle this will cut the opponent bone line tremendous and it will force him to use only his bicep very weak point for them but the this was the main one, the strongest one, the high hook. We've got hook and drag, like this and this, with a ton of drag. We've got, come here, we've got hook and drive, not even dragging the elbow diagonally or any outer edge. Get my cup, I just lean to the side also there's a hook and press where you kind of you get my point these are the four main types of hooking now what I will tell you all to avoid is to never Try to hook outside of the straps. 
if you are a beginner, you know, I would recommend a hook to a complete beginner. It can totally destroy your elbow. But you never want to apply the pressure outside of the strap. That's because top rollers are very tricky. They can hit the fingers and they hit the fingers then we can't get any cup. And we can't do anything and we are going to fall in a trap. We either sleep or they kind of hold on to our fingers and boom, you're pinned down. This was my first thing to do. Second one. Second tip is if you are facing hookers, try to maintain as much of your pronation as possible. Most guys think, yeah, we are going in the same direction or same technique, let's just fully supinate and cup and drag back and do these kinds of stupid things. But if you want to win in the long run, try to honorably deviate and try to maintain even if it stops right here it's better than right here you're not full on your bicep you're still not exposed you can use more frame a little bit of warning is you need a strong side pressure no matter how much or how you hook you need a more stronger elbow. Now, it depends on your, on your style. But, when you are facing top rollers, try to get as deep of a grip as possible. Now, some mistakes I do, what happened, is guys, will only train their bicep and things like that. Never train on your bicep. You will end up supinated, but you're dead right there. Uh, a few transitions. There's the most efficient offensive position for transition and that's where you know, can't finish after a few hits I hit I hit I hit I hit I can't finish my bicep gets sore I can up and around and press now there's also a defensive one which is for hookers it's to get in a defensive hook, shoulder forward, weight pushing on the arm, trying to get the elbow as inside of her body as possible, ulnarly deviate if you can, and try to maintain everything, and keep and keep and hit, let the opponent hit, and then press. Press is the best. Now, A setup trick I always try to do is always when I come up at the table, I always come here. I always try to get an as deep of a grip as possible. I'm not wanting to be shallow, I want to get my cup in. I don't want my cup to be taken away from me just to get the other cup away from them. So set up at the front or even in the middle. I'm going to show you why I want to set in the middle most of the time. So try to push past his thumb and try to get a bit of pocket here. This pocket will help you a ton. You can supinate and cup at the same time and just do that. 
Now, a trick that three t tricks that I always like to teach is let's get to Y. Let's say you have your elbow. Uh, pause the video. So I grabbed one marker and I'm going to draw you a pen. So that I can show you. It's improvised. Not really mentioned. A uh, real arm wrestling pad is 17.8 centimeter per 70.8 centimeters. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider it so that you will not lose more of this content that's very useful and will help you become a better arms. So, why I like to set up in the middle of the pad or even slightly to my winning side of the table, but in the middle, is because a top roller is hitting your fingers and all of this, but if you set it up correctly, you get a deep grip, always set up if you want to face a top roller, set up with your thumb uncapped. If you are facing a hooker, set up with your thumb cap. Now, what you will do when you are facing a strong top roller, these three tips are for top rollers. So, go a little bit back, ready, go, and you drag forward, not the back. We drag forward, ready, go, full supination, trying to get as much as a cup, and then we drive, we drag, we drive to the side, or we press. Now, sometimes that's not enough. That's not going to be enough. Other ways to do it is by let's say you got your spination and a little bit of cup but still this is not enough so you will drive back and go to the side come here and you will drive and get to the side that's because side pressure turns your palm up and that's what the hooker wants so you will drive to the side and drag back and try to keep your wrist flexure as engaged as possible and this will result in you getting your cup boom and after you've got your cup same finish with drag side press now let me draw break this again now also this should be mostly mostly enough this should be mostly mostly enough this means that if you can do this train your cup now you heard it uh, hook beats posting top roll and low hand top roll beats a hooker not most of the time but you get my point now what I'm going to show you is how to train the best movement when you are facing a hooker so we're going to Grab my loading pin for 3 kilos. Then load this and after this 
we want to do owner deviation. The best thing when facing a hook. So, put your hand through. Just like this. And let me show you the left one more time. You take it. For sure, hand through. Just like this. And full deep stretch or portions. But I prefer full deep stretch. And you can also do statics and grow your honor deviation. Here it is mine. I grow mine a lot. Now this is the best exercise. Also, if if you want to get a truly deep stretch, you can set up like this and do it like this. This is also a great way. But now, what I'm going to show you is a mini workout for each type of hooking. Now, we're going to pause the video set up everything and then we're going to come back so we've come back and we're going to take a look on the hook and drive the first fundamental is your cup so how you want to train it is by taking the wrist wrench wrapping it one time and not put the strap on so that we can target the fingers and just take the pulley with side pressure and just work on your cup with dynamics or statics or micro movements so this was the first one this is the main fundamental then we've got the internal rotation also dynamic work for this or statics or you can also go and train side pressure and this was for the hook and drive next thing is the hook and wrap so we're going to do a special kind of wrap to come closer and we're going to target our drag you've got two options and we're going to pass our hand through and do a simple wrap and just drag the elbow back also you can do it nation and cup and just drag the elbow back we are maintaining your pose this will be the best way to train it also, you can wrap the wrist wrench again and push your hand through the strap so that you can simulate how you will pull and also keep it static and drag back or also with dynamic work and for the hook and press I have nothing to show you because it's just like the hook and drive but you come up and press. Now, what can I say? You can take a look on my last video, which is going to discuss even deeper these exercises, also some mistakes. You can check it, I will put the link in the description. Uh, there we take a look on uh, the cup, the drag, the bicep, and the back. So, bye and see you in the next video.